I think today's meeting is continuity. Last week we dealt with uh, the very same department. Now today we are de dealing with the protocol uh, whereby the minister, I mean the deputy minister, was leading this department, and we received the last week we received the apology of the minister whereby she was attending the portfolio committee. Uh, now today they are here, both of them, to show them how they take us this department. I mean, this uh, committee serious. I am not going to waste time. Give us the agenda of today. Uh, Bilela. Yeah. Okay. Apology briefing by the Department of Forestry and Fisher, Fisheries and Environment on the protocol for the protection of the marine and coastal environmental of the Western Indian Ocean from the land based source and activities on the of the Nairobi Convention. The third item is consideration and adoption of the minutes. Okay. Let me start with the <clears throat> Amanda and Bulelo, do you have any apology from your, our side? Means none. Members, no, Chen, nothing from my side. <clears throat> Let me hear from the honorable members. Maybe they want to put an apology for someone, one of the members. Honorable uh, members. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Honorable Mam Kausen. Um. I just want to uh, put forward the apology of Honorable Magwala. He's busy with exams. But I saw him in the. He was. He might. He might have joined the meeting, but uh, yes, he's not... if he's not participate, he's busy with exams. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, Chair. He's in the meeting. Thank you very much, Honorable Mam Kause. Uh, let me check from the minister side, though they are there, they are here, both of them. Uh, Honorable Minister, you're welcome. Uh, do you have any apology from your department, ma'am? Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning to the Deputy Minister. Uh, no, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me not... <clears throat> waste any time and give you the opportunity to give a political overview. And then after the department will present the, pro uh, mm -hmm. or the protocol and then later on the DM will uh, add. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and uh, greetings to all members of the committee. Um, as you can see, I'm together with our Deputy Minister and also with Mr. Ashley Naidu, who will do the actual presentation. Um, Chairperson, this is really a very simple matter. Um, as a government, we want to accede to the Nairobi Protocol which um, is part of, uh, sorry, I should call it the Nairobi Convention, which is uh, involves a protocol for the protection of marine and coastal environment of the Western Indian Ocean from land-based sources and activities. And in order for national government to accede to this convention, we require permission from parliament. My understanding is this matter has already been through the National Assembly, and now we are coming to yourselves for that um, <clears throat> approval. 
So without further ado, I will hand over to Mr. Naidu. He'll just explain to you what this convention is all about. And then obviously honorable ministers will, I mean, honorable members will uh, put forward any questions that they would want to have. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, good morning, Chair, Honorable Members, um, uh, Minister and Deputy Minister. Thank you for the time. Um, the last time I presented, I was not audible, so I hope I'm audible now. And um, thank you, Secretary, for sharing the, the screen. As Minister said, this is a, just a protocol to the Nairobi Convention. And I'm here representing DDG, uh, Dr. Fikizolo, who's in an international meeting uh, for this week. So two weeks ago, um, the committee had a good introduction by Dr. Fikizolo on the convention and the latest amendments to it. This is just a protocol dealing with one specific action on land-based sources of pollution to the marine and coastal environment. Most of the pollution that ends up in the marine and coastal environment is derived from land-based sources. And I'll come to that a, a little bit later on. As Manusa said, we are really to get Parliament's approval to accede to this protocol of the Nairobi Convention. And this protocol deals with pollution sources that originate on the land. Thank you. Next slide. So the convention itself was developed on the United Nations Environment Program. It has a specific program for regional seas. Most of the world's oceans are broken up into what you can call building blocks or cells, called large marine ecosystems. And in South Africa, we participate really in three. On the East Coast, we have the Agalas Current Large Marine Ecosystem, Agalas Somali Current, and this talks to managing that. On the West Coast, we have the Manguela Current, and on the South, within us ourselves, in Antarctica, we have the Southern Ocean. So we really participate in the management of three regional seas programs. The overall objective of this um, convention is to have sustainable use and management. The East African coast is a very long coastline, altogether 15,000 kilometers, of which South Africa has the majority of that. We have about 3,000 kilometers of that coastline. There's always a contest between us and Somalia as to have the longest coastline, but it's a toss up between ourselves and Somalia, who has the longest coastline on the East African coast. We are, gen we are participants and uh, acceded to the convention in 2003. So this fo protocol follows what we've already agreed with. Next slide. So this, uh, the convention, uh, Nairobi Convention generally deals with combating of pollution, the management of natural resources, uh, uh, coastal erosion, how to manage fragile ecosystems uh, through the establishment of marine protected areas or other environmental management uh, mechanisms, and to take all necessary measures to deal with pollution. So as I mentioned earlier, these ecosystems, the Somalia Gullis ecosystem is regarded as one ecosystem. So pollution anywhere in the ecosystem, especially if it comes uh, from north of us, generally we may feel the impacts of that. So we need to work together to monitor and mitigate impacts of pollution. Next slide. So this was really, um, this land-based uh, uh, protocol to deal with land-based sources of pollution and uh, other activities that impact the marine environment was really developed between 2005 to around 2010. It went through various um, uh, national stakeholder engagements um, up until 2018 when we had the last stakeholder workshop. And as Minister mentioned, we're now catching up through getting uh, Parliament's approval to formally uh, participating um, in the protocols of the convention. Thank you. Next slide. Um, some detail on this protocol. Uh, it has uh, 26 articles or sections, generally defining that it works from all parties participating in the convention, from Somalia down to us in South Africa. And what are the obligations? It really provides for the pollution, management of pollution, to look at what are the activities that are degrading the coast and the ocean. And it looks as point source. So an example of a point source of pollution would be either a port or a sewage pipeline or an industrial pipeline that has a fixed point. Diffuse sources, generally harder to deal with. They come down rivers and could be microplastic pollution, um, other chemicals that are used further up in industries that come down through rivers. 
And a major one identified in uh, diffuse pollution is uh, fertilizers that are used in agriculture or crops along the coast. These seep through the sand dunes in, so there's no point you can manage. And so generally they're difficult to get a handle on. Um, it followed the, uh, the processes, our, our national processes, this protocol of going through um, to get legal opinion uh, nationally to see whether we could. There were no objections to us uh, uh, participating in, the, um, in this protocol, which, form, which falls under the Nairobi Convention, which we are a member of. Thank you. Next slide. And this is getting to the end, the last slide. Um, following um, opinion from um, state uh, chief state uh, law advisors that uh, because it follows the um, convention uh, intention, it is a protocol that is allowed for within the convention. Uh, we rec they recommend and we recommend that we receive, receive approval for acceding to this uh, detailed protocol on land-based sources of pollution activities falling under the Nairobi Convention. Thank you, Chair and members. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, the presenter and the minister. Uh, honorable members, here is the presentation in front of you. It needs your comments and clarity seeking questions. Now I give back, uh, give, give you an opportunity to ask question or to comment. I'll see by raising of hand, I can see Honorable BB, Honorable Laboskarni, uh, Honorable, yeah, those are the two hands that I recognize uh, for now. Oh, Honorable, uh, Mam Kausa, Honorable Mama Gwini Nguenya. You can start, Mama, Bibi. Okay, Mama. Um, good morning to your good self and also good morning to the minister and the deputy minister and also the officials and uh, also our colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, I just have got two questions uh, on my side. Uh, the first one uh, will be that, uh, Chairperson, um, I'd like to know whether uh, the department has any guidelines uh, concerning uh, environmental uh, impact assessment uh, consistent uh, with the land-based sources and activities protocols. Uh, if yes, can you explain how often uh, do you review and update uh, those guidelines, uh, Minister? And the second question, Chairperson, uh, will be uh, as part of advancing the LBSA protocol, is the department planning to work jointly with other countries uh, like to develop and promote any contingency plans uh, to respond to incidents uh, involving uh, pollution or the threat thereof um, in the convention uh, area? If yes, Chairperson, which countries uh, are you planning to work with, uh, Minister? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Those are my two questions. Thank you very much, Mom Bibi. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Good morning, Minister, Deputy Minister, and everyone. Uh, I also only have two questions. Uh, my first question is, Minister, quite some while ago, uh, uh, in the Select Committee for Mineral Resources, we actually, I think it was in the previous parliament or beginning of this term, but it doesn't matter. We had a presentation and we had a, a map where they indicated all the uh, oil and gas exploration sites offshore and onshore. And if you look at that map, it's, it's there's very, you know, absolutely very little 
of the sea along the coastline of South Africa that's not sort of mapped for possible exploration and so on. So my question is, you know, with all that, and we had to, to, to do sustainable development, so obviously some of these resources are already being um, uh, um, uh, looked into and will in future. Um, will this will this convention or will the the management of um, producing oil and gas on and offshore be covered by this convention when it comes to pollution and protection? And then the second question is. Um, does this agreement uh, create a, a possible opportunities for funding for special projects such as maybe protecting ecosystems or uh, scarce um, uh, uh, um, uh, species? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Lavaskarni. Honorable Mamam Kausei. Honorable Mukause. It seems she is having a problem. Come, come on, uh, Mama Nguyen. Thanks Mama. very much. Thanks very much, Chair, and good morning to the Minister and the Deputy Minister, and also thank you for the presentation. Chairperson, since South Africa is a member state and the contracting party to the Nairobi Convention, I want to check that uh, has the department experienced any difficulties in the implementation of the land-based sources and activist protocol? If yes, what were the difficulties? The second question, Chair, apart from the LPSA and the other protocol, I want to check which the committee approved last week how many protocols that the Nairobi Convention has. Thank you, Chair. Kalebu. Thank you very much, Mom uh, Gwenya. Honorable Mom Kause. Osmabatum Kause. She's sleeping. Mom Kause. You are not there. Uh, let me, if Mam Kausa will ask a question, she will do a follow up. Uh, Honorable Minister, you can respond to those questions with your team. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Naidu. But I think that um, what one would want to, to just explain to Honorable Bibi is that um, the <clears throat> environmental impact assessment requirements uh, would, would be something that is uh, under the National Environment Management Act and would cover um, projects that would be carried out at different levels of government. And there would be different authorities that would be responsible for the environmental impact assessments. So um, certain environmental environmental impact assessments would happen under pro provinces. Others would happen at national level. One should also explain to you that there, there is also a requirement for waste management licenses, which would be under the national um, environment waste legislation. So all of, of these um, processes 
have their own regulatory environments that cover them. And um, obviously from time to time where necessary, those regulatory environments would be reconsidered. Um, but at this point in time, there, there isn't a, a reform on those regulations. I think honorable members of this committee know that where we have regulatory reforms, we do um, as, as was the case with all the biodiversity and conservation legislation, um, which also involved aspects of the Waste Act and so on, we did bring them before yourselves. And that was a, a process that went on uh, for many years and if my memory serves me correct, concluded last year. Um, but I think that, uh, let me hand over to Mr. Naidu and he will explain how this protocol intersects with other aspects uh, of environmental law. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister and uh, Chair and Honourable Members for the question. Uh, in addition to um, the Minister's response on, on the EIAs, um, let me expand a little bit on that. What the protocol allows for is synergies between the participating countries uh, the last part of the first set of questions was uh, which countries are involved. And generally, the countries that are involved uh, will be countries in, in the, within the convention, and that will include uh, Comoros, Kenya, Madagascar, Mauritius, Mozambique, Seychelles, Somalia, uh, Tanzania, ourselves, and um, France, because France has some territories in this part of the ocean uh, as well. It really allows for reporting on standards reporting on, um, uh, on activities towards mitigation and uh, sharing information on the risk levels that each country poses, uh, or each country may be managing, not poses, sorry, each country may be managing. And this leads to a second set of questions on um, is oil and gas. And yet this allows countries to exchange information on the risk tiers uh, in oil and gas and other levels of pollution that countries are mitigating, and it allows for some uniformity of approach, some building of resources in the region across countries so that we know which countries have what resources in the region in case of an emergency. Um, does the protocol allow for accessing of funding? Uh, certainly it does. In fact, these are one of the main uh, aspects of, of, of the protocols. It allows countries in the region to jointly put forward uh, proposals to big environmental um, funding agencies like the Global Environment uh, Facility or, or World Bank um, to look at um, synergy projects, assessing um, pollution levels, combating strategies, uh, building background levels of, of monitoring and emergency protocols. So it does allow for accessing uh, funding for joint projects. The key on this is that you must take other countries together with you in the joint proposal and uh, this is definitely one of the assets of, uh, of such protocols. Um, the next set of questions, has there been any difficulties in working with uh, the convention and its protocols? Um, generally, um, we do have um, the, the usual range. One, it's a, um, uh, working with um, joint projects. It's meeting together to write proposals. Uh, it does take a lot of time and investment in writing proposals. Uh, and then when funding is received, uh, we have to work with National Treasury to get funding through us. We are getting better at that, but it does take a long time to the department working National Treasury because the funds go through that. Uh, we are, are getting better on it, uh, better at it. And um, with regards to how many other protocols that the Nairobi Convention has, it has this protocol on land-based sources of pollution and activities. It also has work around the protocol uh, on developing protected areas and wild flora and fauna in the East African region. It also has a protocol on um, emergency uh, cases for combating pollution in the East African region. So it does have a few other related protocols on that. Uh, Chair, I think those were the three series of questions uh, that we asked. Uh, back to uh, you, Chair and Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, <clears throat> sir. Um, let me check from the members whether they have um, a follow-up question. 
or their questions were not answered as expected. Honorable members, are you fine? Oh, oh, oh. Honorable Mukiva? No, th th thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, no, I think the, the, the answers uh, are quite succinct. And um, I just want to check what would be the, the cost involved uh, uh, on annual basis in so far as um, financing uh, this uh, convention. What, what would be our contribution as, as South Africa through, through, through the Department of Environmental Affairs, Fisheries and Forestry? Um, yeah, I think the issue revolves just around the cost so that we have a, a clear view and a clear picture of the financial implications. I do understand that um, the convention itself, it is a progressive one. And it, it helps that uh, we as African countries join hands uh, in managing uh, an aspect of our asset, uh, especially in a critical area um, where there's always a contestation between the African waters and the so-called international waters. Uh, but be that as it may, just to understand the cost and the cost implication. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Mkiva. Uh, Mema Mkause, are you back? None. Uh, let me give back to you, uh, Honorable Minister in your team and Deputy Minister. Look like the minister uh, is kicked yeah. out. Oh. No, okay. no, I'm here. Let me oh, hand over. Let me hand back to um, Mr. Naidu. Uh, thank you, Minister. So um, I think related to the previous question, as a country, we pay our annual fees to the Nairobi Convention. Uh, and that doesn't change with the addition of more protocols. So we, we pay the one fee that we've been paying since we're a member of the convention. Our fees to the Nairobi Convention in, two, in 2022 was 543,180. So it's about half a million rand. And you don't pay extra for the protocol. It is the intention related to my previous discussion that the protocols then, the uh, officials from the country write proposals on activities that the convention must carry out, whether it's protected areas, looking at surveys to identify critical key habitats, developing emergency protocols for emergencies that may arise, sharing information and platforms, uh, as countries, participating countries, you're expected to write proposals to uh, global bodies and then receive fundings for those specific activities. But your once off uh, convention payment, that remains your uh, contribution to the convention. And that really goes to the running of the convention and its secretariat. And that's about half a million a year. Thank you, uh, Minister and Chair. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. And your team, minister and your team. Um, members, are, are you okay? Honorable Kiva, I can I see your hand or is it a legacy hand? You know, it seems it's a legacy hand because you are not responding. <clears throat> no, uh, minister and your team. Uh, really, this protocol is very key. As the committee, we have received your presentation and then we'll deal with it as the minister and her team requested. Let me thank you for this uh, presentation and make sure that you attend to clarify some uh, political issues that maybe the committee wanted to know. We thank you and the deputy minister for being, taking us serious again. Now I can give you the closing mark. Remarks. Uh, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chairperson, thank you. It's indeed us who must thank you 
for taking our request seriously. And uh, we look forward to your approval in this matter. Thank you very much. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Now you are released, ma'am. Members of the Thank committee, you. you can remain so that we can continue with the business of our committee. Okay. Um, welcome and uh, the Honorable Papa uh, Chocolate. I've been here, Chairperson. I joined it oh, about five part. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you, uh, kept on, you, you kept on calling for Macausa's name, <laughs> and she's probably <laughs> sleeping wherever she is. <laughs> <laughs> don't want any uh, chocolate <laughs> don't don't come uh, with that thing on honorable nana because you know mom cows <laughs> okay honorable members um now the department have left um i put in front of you the minutes of last week, which is uh, the 23 May, before you for adoption. But let me first check whether did you receive these minutes on time? Yes, we did, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now it's, let's wait, wait, uh, let's check the attendance. Mm. Is it uh, fine, members? No one was not in the meeting or no one who was uh, in the meeting, but his name was not appearing. So I want to make sure. No, it's, it's fine, Chair, and the spelling also of our surname is correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go to number page number two. Mm. Summary of the proceedings. Also check the spelling, the grammar, and the sentence construction, everything. Is it? Okay. Let's go to the next page. Uh, honorable members, is it um, the true reflection of the, our last week meeting? Is it true? Wait, wait. before your true reflection, <laughs> I have been listening to you. I couldn't talk because <laughs> load shedding only affects ANC people and DA of Nana. Now, you, 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 you could have just asked yourself at the point, why would I raise my hand and not talk? So I logged out and in now I can talk. Talk the things that you were talking when I couldn't talk. I'm the last person I'm, I, I, I must be a, 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 a pointed out as a person who's sleeping in a meeting. ANC people and the DA of Nana sleeps in meetings all the time. 
all the time. But you are not making such comments. No, I must talk because. Oh, uh, I couldn't talk. Apologize on record because you said that on record, and I was struggling to talk because of this low shading. Now we, you have talked now. Invented by the AMC. You are glad I couldn't speak. Sorry for that, ma'am. Honorable Mkausa. Honorable Mkausa. This is not a good talk. I, I I wholeheartedly withdraw the comment I made against Honorable Makausa. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Honorable. My Lord Chara, hot strong man. Honorable Makausa, Honorable Nana, strong. Honorable members. Is it the true reflection of our last uh, meeting? Now I put in front of you for adopting the minutes. Thank you, Chair. It's Honorable Mwenya. Honorable Mwenya, yes, Mama. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, Adopting the minutes as it is. Thank you. You are moving for the adoption. Yes, Chair. Any second? Thanks, Honorable Chair. Zoranim Kiva, I'm seconding. Thank you very much, Honorable Mukiva, for seconding the minutes. Now our minutes is uh, adopted. Uh, Honorable members, it brings us to the end of our meeting. But before I close this meeting, honorable member, uh, next month we will go in back to Northern Cape. Remember last year we went to Northern Cape, we did oversight over the issues of minerals resource. And, but unfortunately by that time we met with the community the community raised their issues, but none from the department and um, from the mining bosses. None of them, they were not, um, they didn't answer. Now this is the time for us to go back, to get the response from both department and the mining houses. So we'll be taking that oversight next month on the 26th. Until, oh yeah, until the third. And then on Friday the third, we will be in dealing with the issues of CPA and traditional affairs. Go. I forgot the name. Maybe Mam Kausa will help us with the name. Kwakosi Petru. There is a serious uh, fight between the traditional leaders and the CPA. So, as the committee, we need to go there to get more information from both sides, from traditional affairs and from the department and the CPA, because it seems there is nothing uh, according to the letter that Kosi uh, wrote to me. He wrote several letters to me and I've sent those letters to the department. Um, I'm still waiting for a response because they were saying, no, we note for your, your letter and then we will come back to you. So I would like us, on the last day, we must go to a traditional uh, affairs, I mean, department, I mean, King, traditional council to hear. And if there is something that we can help as a committee, we can do so. I hope honorable members, uh, you will assist this committee and we will 
that's the a public rep. We are not going to take any side. When we go there to the mining bosses and the department, we must remember one thing. We are representing the, 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 the country and our, the interest of our provinces we must bear in our mind. And also when we go to the Kosi and his traditional council and um, the CPA, we must remember that Tina, we must represent the interest of our community. Whether it's a traditional leader, she's, whether it's a CPA, we must make sure that we represent their interest. Maybe sometimes, I'm not saying sometimes, there is a misunderstanding between the two of them. So if we have had any solution to assist, to unite them, let's go there. Though we are not, uh, our mandate is not to unite the, the fighting people, but let's go there, we'll see what can we do. I hope, uh, this thing, uh, members will assist. I don't know, members. Um, maybe someone wanted yeah, to yeah. ask. Okay, yeah. my, hand, my hand has been up. Okay, Mama uh, Mukause. Chairperson, the name of the village is Camden. The name of the traditional affairs is Camden. Now, Camden. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very Camden. much. C A C A M D E N. That's the name of the traditional affairs, uh, traditional authority. Thank of you, Ma'am. Now, Thank Chair, you, Ma I, yes. I wanted to just pass this one uh, through you, Chair, that we, we are having difficulty since the beginning of the term in this committee. Yes, When we are invited for oversights mm. or any other matter that relates to our work outside the jurisdiction of our workplace, which is in Cape Town. We need a formal invitation explaining in details where are members going on such and such a date and what is the reason for the oversight. We are from different political parties and these things that we are seeing happening, especially in your committee, that we are not being taken serious in terms of invitations and all of that. It's wrong. We have said this thing over and over again, that be proper, be professional, and invite us properly, and tell us where we're going. We're not kids, Jefferson. We can't be told that tomorrow we're going to Northern Cape and we need to pack our bags and leave without our principals knowing exactly what we are going to do there. So you need to correct that because it's only in your committee that we are seeing this thing. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mom Kause. I am not going to respond uh, in some issues that you have raised, but um, I said from the beginning, this committee, we are working as collective. If I made a mistake, you are there to assist me. Sometimes I will be uh, not knowing that I have to invite an individual uh, to attend the oversight as that member, he or she is a member of the committee. But today, because you are raising this matter, I will go back and consult with my, uh, uh, my house chair and my whips to, so that they can help me how to deal with this matter. But thank you very much, ma'am. Honorable uh, Nana. Thanks, thanks, Jefferson. My 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 confusion is on is on the dates. I do not know whether my calendar is outdated or uh, I, I do not know. Uh, the oversight is meant to be ending on the first, and in my calendar, the first is on a Saturday, and you've just said our last day will be on a Friday meeting the traditional authority with the community. Can I please get clarity, sir? Okay, Honorable Nana, the reason why we say uh, until the first, it's uh, because maybe we'll finish late on Friday. 
then the traveling to uh, those who are able to travel on 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 Friday they can do so. Those who who are unable to travel on Friday they will travel on Saturday the first. And honourable member, as you see that um, that week it will be our first week uh, for constituency. And I requested that week because we didn't have time. We were supposed to go for oversight last week, according to, to the calendar of the, the program of the NCOP. But unfortunately, because that week we were very busy, all of us were debating, some members were busy with their exams, God, everybody was busy, we couldn't go there. Then I requested, uh, and the, the other thing uh, is the program. We have a lot of things in front of us to do, to deal with them. So that's why I requested the first, only first week of our constituency period. Then from there, we will be going back to our constituency so that at least we deal with these matters and finish finish them. So we will traveling Friday and Saturday, uh, Honorable Nana. Noted, Chair. Uh, I will, Amanda, I will, I will confirm my availability probably before the end of this week. Thank you. Okay. Honorable Mamam Gwenya. Thanks very much, Chair. Chair, uh, I was asking that uh, the SNT also need to be ready because, Chair, I've observed that uh, always when we have oversight visit, especially on this committee of us, our SNT, we always get it late. Sometimes it's worse, you go, we get it on the day you go back home. And I believe that it, it was not, not meant for that. Can we improve on applying for that NCT for us? Thanks, Chair. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mam Gwenya. Lastly, Chair, uh, and uh, okay. Mam PP also uh, must be prepared uh, correctly. Mm. seeing that we cannot uh, fight again. Okay. So I'm asking that uh, they must make sure that Mama Bibi is getting her savings as supposed to. In terms of a booking and the helper of Mama Bibi and the transport for Mama Bibi. Thanks. No, thank you very much, Mama, for that point uh, that you are raising. Those two points that you are raising is very key because really, um, uh, Bulelwa and Amanda, I don't, like I said yesterday about the accommodation, uh, Bulelwa, I was, uh, sorry, members, I spoke to my committee uh, uh, colleagues to say uh, they must make sure that they get a proper, a decent accommodation for honorable members so that I don't want these members to struggle when they get there or they don't sleep well and we expect them tomorrow or the following day to participate in the meeting, whereas they didn't get a, a, a proper sleeping. So the issue of Honorable BB, it will be addressed. Um, we are going to make sure that he's getting his uh, hair, uh, everything that he's supposed, to, she's supposed to get. The proper car, proper accommodation, and also the, uh, the, his hair, hair assistance will, getting, will get everything that he's supposed to get. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Um, I don't know, Mom Kausel, your hand is up. I don't know. Is it the legacy hand or that hand? 
It's an honorable. Okay, thank you very much. Honorable members, this brings us to the end of our meeting. Let me thank you for your, uh, for your participation and to make sure that you ask a robust questions and where there was need for comments, you did so. Thank you very much. I am so proud about you committee members. You are doing excellent job. Thank you very much. This meeting is officially adjourned. See you at the house. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Chairperson, Mama. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you, Chair. Oh, oh, Lord, leave the late leader. Lord, leave the late leader. On the chairperson of Bong. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson.